First question is about Dubundis. What are Dubundis? Dubundis is a sect from uh, uh, the Muslim Ummah. They, I think, originated in Darul Uloom, in Duband, and they had a pivotal role in countering the British conquest of India and uh, um, to end their reign there. So they fought bravely against them and they tried their level best to preserve Islam, according to their knowledge, by introducing their sect to the community and it was widely spread. Now, having said that, Tablighi Jama'at usually is from the Dubandi, and this is uh, related also to Brother Umar from Bangladesh. So, what is wrong with Dubandis? Well, they have a lot of good things, but they have a lot of bad things. And as Muslims, our allegiance is not to a group, and it is not to a country, and surely it is not to individuals. So I would not go out of my way to express my allegiance to Imam so-and-so, or to Sheikh so-and-so, and whoever speaks ill about him, he's my enemy. And whoever my Imam or Sheikh speaks ill about, then I will take arms against him. No, 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 no. This is not Islam. Our allegiance is totally to Allah Azza wa Jal and to his messenger Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam. And this is why we are like a magnet of hate when we are in the communities. Everybody hate us. Why? Because we're Muslims. So non-Muslims hate us for our commitment to our religion. We are following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So all those who innovate in Islam and want it to be shoved in our throats, down our throats, hate us. Because we follow the Quran and the sunnah and the favorite three generations of the, tab of the Sahaba Tabi'een and Tabi'i Tabi'een, those who control the masses and they embezzle them and take their money by telling them, Simon says, if you don't obey, then you'll go to hell. They hate us because we come to free people so that they only enslave themselves to Allah Azza wa Jal, no one else. So, as Muslims, we look at different sects and cults in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. We do not have any beef with any sect or cult just for the color of their eyes and the color of their hairs and the tone of their skins. No, we have no beef with any sect or cult just because of their language that they speak or where, which country they are originating from. We are Muslims, whether you're from Japan or from Hawaii or from the, uh, of Africa, you're my brother. We share a common thing that is Islam. So what's the problem? The problem is when you come and introduce something that is not part of Islam. Give me an example. I'll give you an example. I give you examples, but I don't want to devote this segment to such things, but I'd like you not to be biased. I'd like you sort of to have a, an out of body experience in the, sense, in the sense that I'd like you to listen to me with your intellect, with your head, not with your feelings. Don't look at me as a, 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 an extremist, Wahhabi, so, so, no, no, no. no. Listen to me and see if what I'm saying is logical in accordance with the Quran and Sunnah. If someone were to come and innovate in Islam, what's the ruling of innovation? 
It's haram. All Muslims agree that bid'ah takes people astray. This is what the Prophet said, Aisham. He said, every bid'ah takes a person astray. And everything that takes a person astray leads a person in hell. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدَثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ Everything innovated is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah takes you astray and everything astray takes you to hellfire. This is what the Prophet used to say in every major in, uh, 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 congregation, whether it's Jum'ah, it's Eid or whatever. So you agree in this? 100%. Okay. If someone innovates in Aqeedah, so the Aqeedah of the Dubandis and the Tablighis, they follow Abu Mansur al-Maturidi, which is sort of a fine-tuned Ash'ari Aqeedah. It's almost the same. So they have an issue with Allah's beautiful attributes. They have issues with where to or how to believe in certain aspects of things of Iman. And all of this is due to the sources of learning. So they have a big issue here, and that's one part. But if you go to practices, whether it is in Salat, whether they follow Al-Hanafi Fiqh, Hanafi school of thought in Fiqh, but they have innovations, whether it comes to Adhkar, whether it comes to uh, celebrating the Mawlid, whether it comes to every aspect of life, there is something here or there that you will find it creeping in and in their beliefs. You find so many of them kissing their thumbs and wiping their eyes three times whenever they hear the name of the Prophet ﷺ, claiming that this prevents their eyes from falling sick to trachoma or be blinded by any other disease. Where did you get this from? So there's so many things. Therefore, we tell them you're our brothers, but there are th certain things that we have to come to term. And that is, make our Quran authentic sunnah, the things that govern our relationship, and then inshallah, we will be in good hands.